Hello, my name is Julia and welcome to lesson number 15 of the Flow Acrylic Ministry hosted by Jules Artsy Boutique. The title for today's, today's lesson is What is Baptism? And we're going to be using a water spray technique as we kind of think about and contemplate the topic of, of baptism. So the only thing special that you're going to need is you're going to need a spray bottle with water of some sort. And then I'm going to use a technique where I'm using a blow dryer or if you don't have a blow dryer, you can use a straw or I may end up using a little bit of both. Um, but ultimately, the concept of this lesson is going to be about baptism. So we're, the spray bottle is the most important. You could technically use any of the other techniques we've used in the other lessons to create an image and then um, use a spray bottle on top of that. But I'm going to use a hair dryer today. So before we get started, I'd like you to join me in prayer. So if you'd bow your head. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for today. I thank you for this new day to spend with you, Lord. I thank you that your love um, is all around us, even when we don't notice it, Lord. I just pray that you would help us to understand um, baptism, Lord. I pray that you would uh, show us... Um, what it is and show us the meaning behind it. Lord, I pray that you put a conviction in our hearts that if we've never been baptized, that you put a desire for us to do so and then lead us to the place to do it, Lord. Um, I really thank you for the gift of baptism um, and what it represents. In Jesus' name, amen. So water baptism is an act of faith that we as Christians are instructed to take. Um, Jesus uh, himself was baptized in water and he commanded us to do so when we believe in him. And it takes a lot of faith to stand in front of your fellow man and publicly claim Christianity. It is through this act of faith that we receive the Holy Spirit the water baptism is an act we choose to take, and it reflects the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if we claim Jesus Christ as our Savior, then we need to get baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for that is a command that we have. So I'm going to read a passage of Scripture, and it's from Acts 2, 38. And it says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's Acts 2.38. So let us imagine today that we are the canvas and that God is the painter. And we're going to say that the spray bottle with water represents water baptism which is a reflection of also baptism with the Holy Spirit. So for the first part, we're going to prepare the canvas and we're going to spread white paint all over the entire canvas. And while you are spreading your white paint, I want you to think about and contemplate what do you know about water baptism or do you even know what water baptism is? Maybe you've never heard of that and maybe you have no clue what that is. Or maybe you have been baptized before. So just when you think of baptism, what things come to mind? What what memories come to mind? Uh, what uh, What types of scriptures or understanding about baptism do you have? So, um, I know there are a lot of churches that, like, for instance, for people that, uh, kids that are raised in church, usually kind of when they become a teenager or so, a lot of times there's kind of like a course that you go through, which kind of teaches you, you know, the fundamentals, uh, kind of basics of Christianity. And then at the end of it, everyone kind of gets baptized. Or similarly, a lot of churches that if you ask, you know, that you want to be baptized, there's some type of little kind of course or or thing that you go through to um, kind of teach you about baptism and make sure that you understand uh, the meaning behind what, what you're doing. I 
I was baptized when I was 18. Um, it is something that my coach, who is the person that shared the gospel with me and um, discipled me in my, my teenage years, had talked to me about baptism and what it is and and encouraged me to get baptized and so um, I decided to do that when I was 18 and I got baptized um, at the church When I think of baptism, I often think of a passage of scripture known as the Great Commission, which is where uh, there was basically a commission to go forth and and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit which is one of the things that when it, one of the missions of the church and all of us, which is to build disciples and baptize people. I also think of kind of like scripture of where um, there's a Pharisee that kind of named Nicodemus that came to Jesus kind of like asking questions and whatnot and there's a passage of scripture and I'm probably quoting it incorrectly here uh, but it talks about that you know we have to be born again of water and spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven and so it's that you know it's the water baptism that we take is, is a step, is a um, is something that we are we if we are when we come to faith in Jesus that we should do. I kind of think of like an analogy, like. And this is probably this is, this is probably coming from my own brain here, but analogy of like, you know, if you met someone and you fall in love with them, and you think, I'm gonna be married, I want to marry that person, and maybe you're even engaged. But if there's no wedding ceremony, if you never sign the marriage certificate, can you declare that declare that you're married to that person? And I think of kind of like baptism or the act of baptism is similar. It's a, it's a ceremony, it's a process, it's a thing that we undergo to declare our, our that we have faith in Jesus, that we um, have the promise of salvation, that, that we will walk in obedience to his commands, that we submit to his authority. All of those things that is, is it's a public declaration of that through the, this kind of, um, process of water baptism is similar to like, you know, a wedding ceremony in a sense of like, you know, if you never have a wedding ceremony and you never make vows to a person and you never, um, publicly declare those vows and, and you, you never say to that other person that, that, I mean, are you married? You know, and I think it's kind of similar. It's like, if we in our heart have faith in Jesus, but then we never make the step of to go through the process of water baptism, it's kind of like trying to marry someone without ever having a wedding ceremony <laughs> or a or, or ever declaring vows to them. And so that's kind of like how I think of of uh, the process of water baptism, um, and, or that's kind of like an analogy I kind of think of. Um, 
So we got our white paint and we poured it out. So the next thing what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a bunch of blues and a little bit of gold and red. And I'm just kind of swirl the paint through kind of the middle of this um, canvas kind of randomly with these colors. And while you are kind of pouring your colored paint out, I want you to contemplate this question. If you have been baptized before, why did you get baptized? If you have never been baptized, what prevents you from doing so? So I was actually talking to someone um, and asked them, you know, if they had ever been baptized and they kind of told me, yes, I was baptized when I was a child and, but it was just kind of like something that, um, you know, I went through the class at church and everyone was getting baptized. So I just got baptized also. Um, and since then, you know, have kind of, they kind of question, question Christianity and question God and question faith in Jesus. And, and so the, the act of them being baptized was more about that's because what everyone else is doing and that's what the expectation was for me. And I was only, you know, in sixth grade or whatever. And so it's a question of, does it count? And, you know, I think that's a hard question that I don't know that I can answer completely. Um, cause it, it's probably between the person and God, but it's not the, it's not being dipped in water that makes baptism something right. Any, you know, I can go sit in a bathtub and be dipped in water. It is the faith that is the heart behind it. And so if when we are baptized, we don't have a heart of faith, then it's really kind of an, an empty, any empty ritual. Um, I don't, I don't think that that, that is of any, any eternal value. It's ultimately, it's the faith in a person's heart. It's, 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 it's the, a heart that has, is repentant, that knows that they need Jesus for, for cleansing and forgiveness of their sins. And that truly believes that, that makes baptism something of, of, of eternal value. And so it's, it's a process that even J Jesus took to being baptized in water. But it's the faith and the repentance that we have inside us that makes it anything of value. Um, or at least that's what I have kind of come to terms with. Um, you know, I've met a lot of people that, you know, claim Christianity that haven't been baptized. And I find that um, interesting of why someone would claim Christianity but then not want to get baptized. Or people people put it off and be like, oh, well, you know, I'll do that later, you know. Um, and kind of like the question of like, well, if, if I don't get baptized, does that mean I'm, I'm going to go to hell, you know? I mean, I'm not going to heaven and... I think that's a, also kind of a hard question to answer, but, you know, because, like, for instance, when Jesus was was dying on the cross and one of the fellow men that were crucified came to faith and um, Jesus kind of promised him eternity and that guy was never baptized in the water. So it's like a question of like if someone on their deathbed comes to faith in Jesus and never had the opportunity to get baptized, does that mean they're not going to heaven? And I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the case. But I do think that if, if you are walking around and healthy enough and have the opportunity to be baptized and you claim faith in Jesus yet you refuse baptism, I question whether you truly have faith. Um, cause I think if you truly have faith and repentance and an obedient heart, scripture is very clear that baptism is the command that we should take. So it, I think 
it's kind of hard sometimes for me to like wrap my head around all of that. Um, it seems like maybe contradictory, confusing, but um, that's kind of what my kind of understanding is. Um, there should be, I mean, almost like if when we truly have a repentant heart and faith in Jesus, I think that that leads to kind of an urgency or a desire to be baptized. Just like in Acts 2, 20, 38, I mean, it's repent and let everyone be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for remissions of sins. Um, it's a call. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a to, to this process. Um, and if we're not answering that call, we are not being obedient to Jesus. And if we're not obedient in the small things such as baptism, how are we going to be obedient in maybe the larger steps of faith that he asks us to take? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my blow dryer and I'm going to blow the paint. Um, so the, for the next part, we kind of blew the paint. We're going to get the spray bottle. We're going to spray water on um, the painting. And we're just going to let it sit. And then we're going to kind of tilt and, and blow uh, the water for a little bit. So I'm just going to spray this. So remember, kind of we're saying this water is like kind of representing water baptism. So we had like... A painting it was a great painting and then now we're dipping this painting on water we're wetting it down and baptism water baptism it's kind of like an act of surrender or it's an act of faith it's an act of obedience to God we're saved by our faith but baptism is also our our, our public desperation and a testimony of our faith in Jesus. And it kind of represents a death to ourself and our old life and a rise or a renewing into our new life. Just like this painting was kind of like, you know, it was an old painting. I, I refreshed it with the water. And through that, I'm going to get this new painting um, that then is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a showing um showing faith and 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 new life and surrender to Jesus 
So I want you to think about and contemplate water baptism and a reflection also of the baptism of the Holy Spirit that we receive. So how is the Holy Spirit moving in your life? I'm going to just blow some of this water. I feel like for me, um, you know, it's through like the water baptism and the Holy Spirit that then dwells inside me that then life and goodness and God's work is, is spread through to people of, around me. And similarly, it's through the Holy Spirit working in another individual that that can also flow into me and feed me. And so just like I'm blowing, like we had this water baptism, this immersion with water. And then now this water is spreading over this paint and creating this really cool art piece. That art piece was a little boring before I sprayed that water, but now it's got something that's very interesting and very beautiful. And, um, and it's the same when we when we get baptized with water baptism and filled with the Holy Spirit. That then, um, if when we continue to walk in obedience and surrender and submission um, to Christ, that the Holy Spirit works to do um, wonderful things in this world. Um, whereas without that, our old selves wouldn't be able to accomplish those things. So this kind of looks really cool. All right. So I just want to encourage you that if you um, if you've made the personal decision to believe in Jesus as your savior, as uh, the means to salvation, as the only way in which you can receive forgiveness for your sins and new life, I want to encourage you to reach out to a church or, um, and and to ask them to baptize you. You know, life is unpredictable. You might be driving down the highway tomorrow and die in a car crash. So if you believe in Jesus as your Savior and haven't been baptized, there's no reason to prolong it. I'm sure if you called up the church today, they could probably schedule you for a baptism. So I just want to encourage you, because um, to claim faith in Jesus, and then not get baptized is to kind of like to claim to marry someone, but then never, never declare that to that person publicly. 
And so is that really a marriage? I, I would question it, right? So um, I just want to encourage you. you. You know, life with Jesus, walking with Jesus has hardships and trials, but it's the most rewarding experience. And it is through faith and surrender and submission to God and to Jesus that so many wonderful things Jesus is the key to so many things. He's the key to our salvation, but he's also the key to living um, a joy-filled life even now. So God bless, and Jesus loves you.